Today we will have a topic on how to DIY various enzymes and liquid fertilizer to boost our plants at home and how this enzyme helps the plants. And most of the material that introduced later will you will be easily found in your kitchen or from our wet market. Have you did or have you tried to do any enzyme at home? If you have been trying to do enzyme before, just uh, write a yes in comment. And this is just, uh, this you never try any enzyme before, then mention, uh, write down no in the comment. So that teacher hands will know that for tonight crowd, mostly is uh, experience in doing enzyme or never have experience on enzyme. So after the sharing of hands, we will have Q&A section. You may write down your question in the comment also. And I will read out, I will read out to Hans during Q&A session. Welcome, Hans Leong. Hans Leong. Hello, good evening, everyone. And today, we would like to share about how to DIY various enzyme and liquid fertilizers to boost plant health at home, okay? So the enzyme we are talking here is for farming and gardening purpose, okay? Not for edible purpose. Although the formula may be the same, okay? It's stated here that uh, we do this at home, but the contents we share about today is applicable for commercial scale, for large scale growing and farming as well. So before we start uh, into how to make the enzyme, let me ask you some question. Have you ever faced these problems before? Okay, for example, we, we make some enzymes, but we're just not sure that we, are we making the enzymes uh, correctly? And we see there are white mold existing on the enzyme. Can it still be used? Or sometimes it's not white in color, but it's black. Okay, the black dot, the black layer exists on enzyme. Can it still be used? Can we redo it? Okay, we don't know. And what does it indicate? Okay, we will talk about this later. And can I just I mix any kind? any material and then to make enzymes and after i make the enzymes how should i make use of the enzymes correctly what do they function okay we can we will talk about this today and why got them i need to make this enzyme or use this enzyme or liquid fertilizer while i already apply the solid fertilizer on soy well you may encounter this situation after you apply after you apply the solid fertilizer. For example, the trunks, the trees are covered by algae. Okay, the plants tends to become aged faster. There are a lot of dry leaves, a lot of dry branches, and the harvest getting less and less until there is no harvest anymore. And the leaves become yellow, something like these, especially after uh, during during the fruiting stage. And sometimes we see there are fruit drops, the small fruit drops, uh, the cracked fruit, the split fruit like this, okay? So, this is, so uh, these symptoms are caused by uh, the plants, uh, lack of certain kind of nutrients. So that's why we hope that through this platform, we are able to learn together, okay? To understand, various benefits of different kinds of enzymes and liquid fertilizers and how to DIY make the enzymes and liquid fertilizers correctly, okay? So let us clarify again on what is enzyme and liquid foliar fertilizer. So we talk about the foliar fertilizer first. The foliar fertilizer is actually the nutrient provided to the plants through leaves, okay? And sometimes other parts like stems. So as you can see here, we mix the foliar fertilizer, we dilute it and we spray to the body of the plant, okay? And the nutrients absorb through the leaves, okay? Sometimes the stems can absorb it as well. All right, the next one is enzyme. So enzyme is actually finished functional foliar supplement as a result of fermentation of natural in ingredients. So depending, uh, depending on the types of mixed ingredients, the finished contents of the enzyme could have, uh, could contain either MPK nutrients, uh, could be mineral, vitamins, plant hormones, uh, antioxidants, 
pest repellent contents, and so on. And also, depending on the type of mixed ingredients, the function of the enzymes could be foliar fertilizer, could be pest repellent, plant health enhancer, soy detox, okay, and so on. And why I need to use enzymes and foliar or foliar fertilizer? So just think about this, okay? We uh, quite often we just apply solid fertilizer. Could be organic fertilizer, could be chemical fertilizer. So uh, whenever we after we apply the uh, the solid fertilizer, the nutrient will be uptake by the roots, okay? And then the adsorbed nutrient will be converted into amino acid, okay? which will transform into protein to be enzyme, to be hormone. And then after that, it will just become the plant component to form the plant organ, to form the parts of the plants and so on. Okay, so just think about this. If we, if we found the plants are unhealthy, plants lack of certain kind of nutrient. So you see the plus, the, this kind of process, it's too long to treat the plants. Okay, so that's why it's more feasible to apply foliar fertilizer. So the foliar fertilizer, we can just like apply the plant nutrient through the leaf. And then we also can apply like amino acid, antioxidant, the hormone through the leaf as well. So the process is quick, okay? The effect is quick, but, the, but it's very short, short term. So the foliar fertilizer is very suitable for quick replenishment. So we come back to this again. So when I need to use the enzymes and foliar fertilizer, if you were growing mid or long-term plants or crops, okay? So if your plants like repeatedly harvesting, okay, you can just like keep, uh, harvest, uh, keep having the harvest, okay? So the function of the foliar nutrient is to prolong and improve harvest. If not, if not doing so, sometimes you will just see that your plants will become old within the short time, okay? And then you need to grow again. By doing this, okay, we can prolong the harvest. And if you observe the symptoms of nutrient defici uh, deficiency, so the foliar, fun foliar uh, function of the foliar nutrient will be treat the nutrient deficiency and make the plants healthier. Like for example, okay, on the left-hand side, you see the, uh, the leaf become yellow like this is lack of certain kind of nutrient. On the right-hand side, the tomato fruit, uh, there is a black, spot on at the end of the fruit, okay? So it's uh, caused by certain lack of certain kind of nutrient as well. And the third thing, if you intend to improve the fruit quality, okay? Then the fun function of the foliar nutrient will be increase the, fr uh, the flesh content and the sweetness. So for the farmers, okay, they, they would like to achieve the three benefits, uh, the three effect of, uh, effects above. So what is the conventional way and to achieve the three benefits above? Okay, usually they just put the chemical foliar nutrient, okay? And the chemical foliar nutrient usually in the form of chemical or semi-chemical. The, uh, the semi-chemical means that like they use the organic base as the, oh, sorry, the organic, uh, the, like for example, the plant base or the organic base as the base, okay? They mix with chemical ingredient to form a product, okay? The foliar fertilizer product. This is what we call the semi-chemical. So, so usually these, uh, these ingredients are made from uh, non-renewable non resources, for example, petroleum, okay? So whenever they spray uh, the, this kind of chemical foliar fertilizer on plants, okay? So the plants will try to absorb uh, as, most, as many as possible, but eventually the, the nutrients will drop to the ground, okay? It will become the chemical leachate, okay? That stays inside the ground or probably leach in, into the water system. The chemical residue is usually non-biodegradable and not able to be assimilated in the natural environment, okay? So you can see one of the serious problem happen worldwide is eutrophication, okay? Which is the algal bloom and the death of aquatic lives due to nitrogen and phosphorus leach into the water system. 
So one of the main cause of this kind of leaching is chemical fertilizer, the chemical fertilizer runoff. Sometimes you see the algae like this, sometimes the algae, uh, the, the, algae, the algae could be toxic, okay? But regardless of the toxicity of the, uh, of the algae, the water itself is already full of dangerous and pathogenic bacteria, okay? And we will lack of uh, clean water source. So we look at this case, uh, an algae bloom caused by fertilizer runoff in Lake Erie in 2014, which was so toxic, the city of Toledo, Ohio, shut down its tap water system. Okay, so it produced, it started to produce toxic, and then inside got a lot of E. coli bad uh, bacteria inside. So we can imagine who is going to pay for for this or suffer from this. Okay, probably not this generation, probably not us, but our sons our grandchildren, okay? Our grandchildren may lack of clean water in the future. Can you imagine? So what if we can choose the method that we take from nature and what we apply can be back to nature? It's a closed loop cycle, okay? That would be really, really, really great. So the enzymes and the liquid fertilizers we are sharing today will, com will comply with this purpose. Okay, so uh, let us do a short revision here. Enzymes and foliar fertilizers serve as quick replenishment of nutrients through foliar, through the leaves. When we need to apply enzymes, uh, when we need to apply enzymes or foliar fertilizers, if you were growing repeatedly harvesting crops, mostly fruit bearing crops, if you were facing nutrient deficiency symptoms of your crops, if you intended to make your fruits sweeter and larger. If possible, choose to apply organic foliar fertilizers to avoid environmental problems such as eutrophication, algal bloom on the water system. So right now we come to enzyme. Whenever we say enzyme, please remember these three numbers, okay? One, three, 10, okay? I repeat, one, three, 10. One, three, 10. Okay, keep this in your mind when you want to uh, do enzyme yourself. So what these numbers mean? So one refers to one kilogram of sugar. Don't choose the white sugar. It could be any kind of like mm, the red sugar, the, uh, the cane sugar, the brown sugar, okay, but not white sugar because the white sugar has been already chemically processed or chemically bleached. So the, a lot of good nutrients like the minerals, okay, are not there anymore and it's not good for the fermenting microbes. Three, referring to the three kilogram of ingredients, okay? So you can mix the ingredients depending according to the target function. You want it to be... Uh, uh, pest repellent or you want it to be more uh, growing more leaves okay so later we will we will talk about this what are the three kilogram ingredients and 10 refers to 10 kilogram of water or 10 liter of water so uh, for this water don't use the tap water okay because the tap water usually contain chlorine which will disinfect the water which will kill the fermenting microbes unless unless the tap water has been exposed under the sunlight for more than two days. Just like if you want to uh, grow fish, oh, sorry, not grow fish, uh, you, if you want to uh, have fish okay, in your aquarium, okay, you need to expose the tap water, uh, uh, expose the water under the sun, hot sun as well. And if possible, you get some microbes, beneficial microbes like EM1, Bacillus subtilis, or else whatever available in your market. Okay, and for the container, if possible, we choose non-transparent or opaque container. Okay, if we only have the transparent container, okay, when we uh, when we do this, we need to cover the container with cloths because this fermentation process uh, it does not favor the hot sun, which will 
uh, which got the UV that will kill some of the good fermenting microbes inside. So we need to use opaque or at least semi semi transparent. So uh, just now we say one kilogram of sugar, three kilogram of ingredient, ten kilogram of water. We mix all together and let it ferment for three months. So during the first month, we may need to open the cap of the container for five seconds, 10 seconds, whatever. Okay, every day to let the gas coming out every day for the first month. Okay. So after that, okay, the gas is getting less and less. Okay. And then you just like release the uh, relief the gas like once a week could be twice, uh, could be once every two weeks. Okay. So during the fermentation process, if you were able to see the white mold on top, like in this picture, okay, means that the quality is really, really, really good, okay? The white means that the good bacteria, okay? If black, okay, means that the bacteria is not that good, okay? It could be uh, some kind of uh, rotting bacteria, okay? So if you see, if you, if you see there are, uh, there are black layers, okay? Black color uh, mold on top, okay? We can add more sugar, okay, add more, one more kilogram of sugar, okay, and we add more microbes inside and then to let it ferment for a while, for more while. If the black layer still exists, okay, we need to redo it again. So today, we would like to recommend three types of enzymes, okay, different kind of enzymes. The three kilogram ingredients will totally be different, okay, it depends on what you want the enzymes to be. The first enzyme is the high amino enzyme, the amino enzyme. So the three kilogram ingredient will be the fish, the fish offer, the leafy vegetables and the vegetable meal. Fruit enzyme, okay. So we prefer using uh, acidic fruits, flesh or skin, for example, lemon, lime, orange, pineapple, and so on, wherever you think it could, uh, is acidic, okay. And the third enzyme is pest repellent enzyme, okay. So we can put the uh, we can put the ingredient, the food ingredient with characteristic and pungent odor. Like for example, onion, pandan, lemongrass, chili, turmeric, pepper, uh, like the you know, the bitter god leaf, okay, whatever. With characteristic odor. Okay, so these are the three enzymes that we can do, we should do in separately. And some friends will turn to come back to me and ask me the question like this. Why just why not just mix all the ingredients together? Okay, to have all these three functions in one kind of enzyme. Okay. Just to let you know, because the, the bacteria, the microbes that to break down into amino, to break down the acidic content, to break down this uh, pest repellent content are totally different, okay? Not the same. So if you just uh, mix all together, it will disrupt the fermentation cycle. It will weaken the fermentation capacity. So after finish the fermentation, we just dilute the rate, uh, dilute at the rate of 2.5 ml, to five, uh, to 5 ml of, of enzyme plus one liter of water, okay? So we just like spray on leaves and or soil, okay? Let us see some scenarios of application. So for the first scenario, if you were growing repeatedly harvesting crops, for example, cucumbits, melon, wines, uh, like grapes, uh, fruiting vegetables, uh, fruit trees, okay? We can mix both or take turns spraying amino enzyme and fruit enzyme. I repeat again, we can mix both together or take turns spraying amino enzyme and fruit enzyme. We repeat this every seven to 14 days. Okay, so why we need to take turns of mix both amino and fruit enzyme? So the amino enzyme, actually it contains high level of amino acid and nitrogen, okay? The benefits, it just like SK2, it's just like your skincare product, okay? You apply to the plant, you, know, you, give, you give amino acid to the plant. It can help to induce new self-growth and promote recovery. It helps to make the plants younger, okay? So it can help to prolong the harvest and induce the leaves to become softer and juicy and the fruits to become softer and creamy, okay? So whenever you grow something, the fruits are more creamy like the pumpkins, or like the durian, okay, this is very good for them. Okay, 
So for the fruit enzyme, it contains high level of potassium, vitamins, antioxidant. So the benefit is just like you give the plants vitamin C, okay? It makes the fruits uh, larger and sweeter. It induces better self-protection for the plants and also it induces the leaves and branches to be harder, okay? So just now we say that we need to take turns spraying uh, or mix both amino and enzyme. So what if we just only spray fish and uh, the amino enzyme or only fruit enzyme? So if we just spray only amino enzyme, the plants, wow, very good. You will see the leaves very green, but the plants may get too juicy, okay? And tends to attract more pests and disease. As you know, the amino and nitrogen become the good source of growth on reproduction for the pest and disease. On the other hand, if we spray only the fruit enzyme, then the plant will tend to be too hard, okay? And the plant tend to age faster as well. So that's why with these two combined together, we can achieve, we can provide the balanced nutrient and uh, to prolong harvest as well. The second scenario will be during the soil preparation for the next growing cycle, okay? We can mix both and spray amino acid and fruit enzyme. Spray to where? Spray to the soil, okay? Why we, why we spray to the soil? Because inside the soil, there are a lot of plant pathogen as well, okay? And there could be some some uh, salts, okay, remain on the soil, remain inside the soil as well. So uh, with this enzyme, it can help to break down the cell wall of pathogens and it attracts and stimulates the growth of beneficial microbes, just like uh, kind of like detox, okay, for your soil, okay? And also it helps in better root growth as well. The third scenario, whenever you see the, your trunks, your branches covered with algae, or you see there are cankers and disease holes existing on your trunks, we can spray fruit enzyme, okay? Is this applicable for the woody tall plants only, okay? Repeat every seven to 14 days. So this tall, if this problem happens seriously on woody tall plants, we mix 10 ml of the enzyme, per one liter of water and spray towards the cankers, spray towards the algae. Why it can help to reduce this kind of problem? Because the acid contained inside will break down the cell wall of algae and also the disease. And also it provides vitamins, antioxidant to make the cell become harder and induce better recovery. And the fourth scenario, if you want to have, uh, want to do pest repellent for the plant's protection, we spray the pest repellent enzyme, okay, for the plants. We may add another three mils of wood vinegar per liter of water for better efficacy. And we repeat this for every seven days, okay? And the second thing, uh, the second thing we would like to share about is DIY foliar fertilizer. Whenever you are growing, uh, fruit bearing crops like kaga beets, melons, wines, fruiting vegetables, fruit trees, something that's fruits, okay? We need to provide these nutrients to the plants, okay? Which are calcium, magnesium, boron. I repeat, calcium, magnesium, boron. Calcium, magnesium, boron. Cow, mag, bor. Okay, so please remember these three, letter, uh, three letters inside your mind. If you saw the symptoms below, it means that your plants lack of these, these nutrients. For example, you see your plants got flower drop, fruit drop, okay, got blossom and rot. It means that the, there are black spot at the end of the fruit, okay? And you see some black spot disease, cracked uh, skin, split fruits, okay? So these symptoms indicates uh, lack of calcium. Why? Calcium is actually uh, one of, uh, actually, one of the important nutrients to form the fruit skin. So uh, they, after the plants absorb the calcium, it will form in, into uh, calcium peptides, which will be used like the Lego blocks to form the fruit skin, okay? So let's say if the surrounding got too much water 
especially during the rainy season, okay, the plant absorb a lot of water, okay, then the internal water pressure inside the fruit become very, very great. So if the skin is too thin because lack of calcium and it cannot sustain the great pressure inside the fruit, that's why the fruit become cracked, okay. For the symptoms, lack of magnesium, okay, it become like this, the yellowing leaf, okay, especially after fruiting, okay. So these symptoms is what we call the fishbowl yellowing. Why? Because lack of magnesium, you will see the flesh of the leaf has uh, become yellow, but the wind of the leaves is still green, okay, just like fish bone, okay. So whenever you see this, it means lack of magnesium. And for those crop uh, fruits lack of boron, you will see the fruits like outlook is look normal, but inside, okay, the center is hollow, blackened, or like jelly, okay. Like for example, uh, this cauliflower, okay, or this watermelon, outside it looks normal, but inside it's hollow. You can see here. Oh, this is not that radioactive, eh? but it's lack of uh, boron. So I repeat here, whenever we grow fruit bearing crops, we need to provide this nutrient, calcium, magnesium, boron, okay? And these nutrients are suitable to be provided through leaves, okay, not through the roots, because these nutrients are hardly absorbed and transformed into available mobile nutrients inside the plants, okay? So it's better to apply through leaves. So how can we DIY this foliar liquid fertilizer, okay? So we can source 100 m uh, we can source this ingredient. We put 100 mils of white vinegar or wood vinegar. We, uh, we mix with 100 gram of dolomite powder. One is acid, one is alkaline. Mix together, neutralization reaction going on. Okay, and we let it dissolve for one night. Okay, so we take the clear liquid above and we mix three mil of the clear liquid plus one liter of water plus one gram of borax, okay, which is a, a very natural boron compound, okay. So we mix together and spray on plants. It helps to replenish these calcium, magnesium, and boron nutrients. So, and then another, uh, another one, if you confirm the plant's lack of magnesium, so we can make use of SM salt. You can just like uh, Shopee, Lazada, eat, you definitely found find the essence salt. So we dilute it with one liter of water, uh, sorry, we mix two gram to 3.5 gram of essence with one liter of water. So it can help to induce old fruit trees to bear fruit as well. For example, the old longan tree, uh, we have consumers uh, spray the essence salt to the longan tree and then it start to bear fruit. And lastly, if we really don't have time to make enzyme, to make foliar fertilizer. Then we may go for the market ready foliar fertilizer. And of course, if possible, we should go for organic, okay? Organic foliar fertilizer. Like this organic foliar fertilizer is made from natural protein source. Going through innovative fermentation, what we, they call the great fermentation technology. And to make sure the nutrient inside become micro -sized. Okay, it's so small that whenever we spray on leaf, body or the roots is very easily absorbed by any parts of the plant. It's made from omri listed organic raw material. It contains organic acid, uh, sorry, uh, amino acid, natural plant hormone, extract, vitamin, mineral, and plant essential nutrients like MPK, calcium, magnesium, boron, iron, zinc, copper, molybdenum, and so on. So we come back to here. No matter what kind of market ready for that fertilizer you use, there are tips, okay? There are some tips that you need to take note. We spray on leaves and stem base for every seven to 14 days. So don't spray every day, okay? Your plants will tend to be over eat, okay? Don't feed too much. Uh, don't feed too much. And we spray after trimming, okay? Because after trimming, the plants uh, got injured, okay? So 
After trimming, we spray and then it helps to boost the recovery of the injured pipe. Okay. And we spray when the symptom of the nutrient defici uh, deficiency exists. So in the future, we will have costs okay, on how to recognize the symptoms of the different kind of nutrient deficiency. All right, let us draw a conclusion here. So just now we recommend three types of DIY enzymes, each with own function. Amino enzymes, fruit enzymes, pest repellent enzymes. Whenever you can, uh, whenever you grow fruit bearing crops, we need to provide calcium, magnesium, boron, okay? Just now we, uh, we told you how to make yourself uh, DIY, calcium, magnesium, boron, foliar, liquid fertilizer. And if we bought from market, please choose organic foliar fertilizer if possible to contribute to better environments. So if you are interested with this kind of organic foliar fertilizer where you can buy, major garden center, online platform, Lazada and Shopee, and so on. All right, so here's the end of uh, our sharing. So now I pass the time to Jess. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Hans, for the sharing so many tips on how to make enzyme at home for our gardens. So Hans have given us a very important digit, one, three, and 10. So this is the magic numbers for our gardens, uh, not for body, not for other purposes. Uh. <laughs> okay, so uh, regarding this one, three, ten, Hans, uh, could we make uh, like adjustment on the ratio? Uh, mm. the, some, there's a question from the comment that can I use one three seven or this is the optimum or this is the best uh this is the this is what uh, this is the golden ratio uh, golden ratio golden ratio of the uh, of the enzyme why because let's say we have done some experiment before if we reduce okay uh, sorry if we increase the uh, the three, okay, the 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 proportion of the three kilogram, like let's say four kilogram or five kilogram, then more black mold will assist, okay. So, but if let's say if we reduce the water content, then the fermentation probably won't ferment that well, okay. Whatever you see, let's say you throw a pineapple inside next, and then the next three months, hey, eh, the still the whole whole bunch of the pineapple over there okay so the fermentation probably not going that well so one three ten is actually the golden ratio of making the enzyme okay thanks Han. before we continue our q a session for friends who just joined our facebook live welcome to tag five friends and share our facebook live to up to the to all your friends who like gardening tag five friends and share our video so could so let more people learn to make the enzyme from today so uh regarding the the all the all these three types of enzyme mentioned just now is it suitable to use in all types of uh, plants for example herbs or or the fruit tree is it suitable to all all planting okay uh just now i mentioned like uh, when is the moment that we uh we can we can make or we can use the enzyme there are three moments Okay, one is if we grow something that is repeatedly harvesting, okay? So you need to check your cross whether it's repeatedly harvesting or not, okay? The herbs probably is probably, if the herbs itself is short-term harvesting, then probably it's not suitable. But long-term harvesting, for example, like, you know, the lemon balm tree, uh, uh, like this kind of herbs, if it's repeating harvesting, it keeps, Need to keep growing okay then this is the correct one and the second one is uh, whenever we see there are nutrient deficiency okay on the plants then you can use the enzyme the third part is whenever you see there are some problems happen on your plants like the cankers the algae then you can make the enzyme also mm. so enzyme is typically important for plants that have continuous harvest yes so mm. what will happen if I spray on the one-time harvest uh, like, plant? Like for example, for the leafy vegetables, of course there is no there is no harm. Like let's say, uh, let's say if we grow like leafy vegetables, we uh we plant pak choy, we plant kailan, okay, then we spray amino enzyme, okay, that actually it helps to make the leaf larger as well, okay. 
then it's very good. Okay, no problem. But the thing is that, but the thing is that you spend three months time and then to, to, to do the enzyme. Okay, but you apply on the one time harvest, probably the time, probably like, you know, probably like the time you spend is not worth it. Uh, so this, so that's why for, uh, so that's what, Hmm? So the main concern is from the cost and time effective yes. efficiency. So yes. if that if after after I have extra enzyme, then just if I want to spray on my plants, then it's okay. It's okay. That definitely is suitable for all kind of plants. Okay. Uh, mm. Okay. So uh, in in the beginning of the sharing, you mentioned that the algae water. So is it safe for us to use algae water to water our plants? Algae water, oh, oh, algae water. Is it very? Is it very common? Uh, in very common or commonly seen in the water system, the algae water. Okay, so the uh, friends who sent us this uh question, maybe you need a uh, clarify that is it the algae always appear on the mm. uh water system or only is uh one one time or not not really common happen. Okay. okay. Pro uh, probably, probably let me elib elib uh, elaborate this. So, for example, let's say if we truly uh, see this kind of algae water on the water system from the on the river system or uh, your party system, okay. So, this water probably not suitable because the algae probably contains a lot of uh, toxic. Uh, could be the algae could produce some certain kind of toxic or uh, uh, in or. Uh, inside may have the dead fish already. So the dead fish will produce a lot of harmful bacteria. So if you water this to your plant, then it's not good, okay? But let's, but we come, but on the other hand, there is another kind of algae water. I know there are some people purposely grow what they call the micro algae, okay? Now grow algae, uh, grow algae for, for certain kind of purpose. You know, we have, a, we have the spirulina, you know the that kind of food, the food supplement. They purposely grow that kind of algae. Then if we, if we, if we put that kind of algae to your plant, okay, then it's good for your plants. Okay. Oh, he she, she mentioned he mentioned that it's uh, algae water from prawns. So I think oh. that this is not yeah. suitable or mm, is avoid. Mm, mm, yeah, should be avoided. Yeah, should be avoided. Yeah. Okay, and then regarding the process of making enzyme, mm -hmm. so we see that uh, in the ingredients we use the uh, fruit slice as ingredient for enzyme. Is it must to put sugar as there could be sugar on the fruit slice? Oh, yes, you need to put sugar, yes. Yes, the sugar content inside the fruit itself is not that many, okay? Just a very little proportion, okay? So we still need to put the sugars, uh, sugar. Uh, just now I mentioned the, how many? One kilogram, okay, that, uh, that portion. Okay, and then what is the impact or what is the difference between if we added the active microbes or we didn't add in the active microbes like the, like oh. the EM1? Okay, so the, th the thing is that um, uh, during the fermentation process, okay, it depends on uh, it depends on your destiny, okay, because we, you don't know what kind of microbes that you can attract from the environment to ferment your enzyme, okay. So, uh, so sometimes uh, on your surrounding environment, there could be good microbes on on your surrounding could be the bad microbes. So that's why in order to increase the success rate of making the enzyme, we need to make sure that the most, uh, most of the microbes inside the mixture is good microbes. So that's why if we add in uh, effective microbe EM or any other kinds of good microbes like bacillus subtilis, it can help to increase the success rate, okay? Okay, and then uh, for the can we can we use high can we use high protein plants material like beans and nuts for amino yes. enzyme? Yes, definitely. Yes, no problem, no problem. And then there could like there are some there are some consumer asking me, huh? Uh, I make the I make the fish enzyme before. Okay, the amino enzyme uh, from fish, but it's so smelly that 
even my neighbor just like complain to me, okay? So there is a tip on like uh, how to make not smelly uh, amino enzyme from fish, okay? I say from fish. If you really want to make it not that smelly, okay? So uh, instead of using the dead fish or the, uh, you know, uh, like the fish put for a long day, uh, for a long period already, then we collect back and we don't use that. We, we use the fresh fish, okay? And then to make it into an enzyme, then the enzyme will tend to be not that smelly. Okay, so just share with you. So we need to use the fresh fish, right? Uh, oh, no, if, it depends. If, it de if the fish already been cooked, can we use in the enzyme? Uh, uh, yes, definitely because it's a protein source. But I, but I don't, but I don't know whether it's smelly or not. Okay, because I never use the cooked fish and then to put the enzyme, uh, uh, to make it, uh, to make it inside uh, into the enzyme. Okay, but uh, a lot of farmers they share with me, uh, for the fish enzyme not that smelly, they use a the fresh fish. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so fresh fish is the top option, la. Top of top option if, if okay, any, but anyone want to try to use the cooked fish? So uh, after you use that, welcome. To share <laughs> yeah, welcome to share with us. For us. Yeah. <laughs> but but just now I got a friend saying that uh using the beans as a sauce. Okay, that would be great as well. Also including the green beans, red beans, yeah. soy back beans. Yes, 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 definitely. Soybean, soya bean, yeah. More okay. convert more convertly available. Okay, so there is a very headache issue uh, problem from Singa uh, Singapore consumer. Yeah. They mentioned that borax is banned in Singapore. Oh, 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 really? So any oh, substitute ah, for ah, this? I, oh, I know. Oh, okay. If let's say, if let's say really cannot get the borax, okay. So, uh, so uh, the other option could be boric acid, but I'm not sure the boric acid is uh, banned inside Singapore or not. But let's say, let's say, okay, because uh, because boron is quite common inside uh, in the environment, okay. So the symptoms of lacking boron is uh, very very little. So if let's say if you want to, um, if you want to uh, replenish boron in the natural way, compost is actually a good source of boron also because it's fermented from various kind of uh, material and then the nutrient is more comprehensive. So uh, uh, during the next growing cycle, during the soil preparation, it can mix in compost and then to replenish the source of boron inside as well. But I would like to know why why the borax is banned in Singapore. I'm not sure. Is it is it because <laughs> it's asking us, but so we don't know about uh, why the borax been banned in, or maybe I, it's a uh, specific. I, I think I think okay. I think because I know that the uh, some uh you know they eat the fish ball. Okay, they add in borax inside. Okay, like it it give you the chewy chewy texture. Okay, the borax. Okay, so I pro probably the borax is banned in uh, food making process, but uh, I'm not sure. You may you may clarify. Uh, you may go to check and see whether it's applicable in other application or not. Or maybe is uh can check with the agriculture mm. or, or nursery. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, Lillian, Lillian mentioned that he will, she will try the cooked fish. So Lillian, <laughs> I'm waiting you to share with us the result. So any anytime when you just done your enzyme, welcome to PM, PM us about your results so we can share with our, our audience in the future. That's great, that's great. <laughs> okay, and next is, okay, can I use hydrated lime as repair? Placement for dolomite powder. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes and no. Okay. Why I say uh, why I say yes because it's actually a good source of calcium. Okay. Why I say no because it contains no magnesium. Okay. So when so whenever you uh whenever you confirm okay I just want to give calcium nutrient to the plant then I can use the hydrated lime. Okay. But if you want to uh, give calcium and magnesium both together, then it's better to, uh, to use dolomite. But other way could be uh, you 
use the hydrated lime plus a little bit of Epsom salt, and then to become the replace uh, to become the replacement for lacking of magnesium as well. Okay, so you can do that. Okay, so there is some tips or some info regarding the borax in Singapore. So friends, you may uh, you may check out some sharing or some info from the comment also. Mm -hmm. So uh, fr from the audience, uh, they, they have shared some info regarding the borax. Okay, I would like to check on it, yeah. Okay, and then if we use pineapple for fruit enzyme, do we need to need to need the skin all only or the whole fruits or it's okay as long it, as it is pineapple? It depends. It depends on what kind of ingredients you have. Sometimes we uh, sometimes uh, we have extra flesh, then we put the flesh. Sometimes we on sometimes we have skin, then we just put only the skin. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Okay, because it depends on what kind of uh, ingredients you have. Okay, and but the most important thing is the ratio. So the if you put the like, say the pineapple skin, okay, or skin or flesh or only the flesh, make sure only add up only to three kilogram. Okay, not more than that. Mm -hmm. Okay, then how much EM to add on? It depends on the EM you bought. Okay, so uh uh, uh the EM you bought you. There is a instruction on the bottle. Okay, you follow that instruction. Mostly, uh, mostly they ask you to add like one liter to two hundred liter of water. So let's say every one liter of water, if you divide it by like this, you should add like five mils of the EM. Okay, and then to make to make the fermentation better, you depends on the uh, application rate. Explain on the bottle. <laughs> Then uh, can we add on the yeast to fasten the process? Uh, yes, actually you can. You can, this, this guy is really smart. Eh? Okay, okay. <laughs> you can, you can, how to say, DIY EM yourself because EM actually comprise of uh, photosynthetic bacteria, yeast and leto and leto bacillus bacteria. So, you can put yeast inside, okay. Plus, you can put the, uh, you know, the white uh, vitagen or the what, 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 yeah, good, okay. Some like that kind of the the drinks, okay, inside, and then to make it the fermentation better, okay. If you really cannot find EM one, okay. So for enzyme, I, is is it a direct nutrients to the plants? Instead of it, it will not help to improving the soil, right? Uh, for soil, we still refer to the compost is better, is it? Okay, for the soil, there are two ways. Okay, uh, you can use the comp because compost is actually helps to improve the uh, properties of the soil, uh, texture of the soil, soften the soil, and give uh, more comprehensive nutrient. That one is the compost. But if we spray enzyme on soil, it actually acts like a detox for the soil. Hmm. Detox because after we grow, there might be some bad bacteria inside. There might be some, uh, some salts, the toxic salts inside. Okay, so we can spray some enzyme and then to break down all these poisonous substance. Okay, uh, bad substance inside the soil. Hmm. Yeah. So if you if the purpose of you to in to use to improve the soil, which are more clay more stickiness one, it is recommend that you go for compost. Compost. Compost-based fertilizer is more effective in mm. uh, improve the soil condition. Yep. Mm. So, you know, so, you know, like some of the consumer, they say, they, they keep, uh, they ask us, after I grow, uh, I, I, I grow something inside the pot, okay? So, I want, can I reuse the soil? Yes, you definitely can use the soil, but we always ask you to disinfect the soil first before you grow for the next cycle. So one of the way to disinfect the soil is using the enzyme. Okay, you can spray towards the soil to disinfect for disinfection to detox like that. Okay, there's still many questions regarding uh, can I use this uh, material? Can I use that material? Mm. So because due to the time constraint, oh. I cannot read out all the ingredients. So friends, you are welcome to PM us that what material you are not sure but you not sure whether it could be added in your in your uh, enzyme. Anytime, mm. welcome to PM us. 